Just sit up in the newsroom yesterday, UK residents who test positive for coronavirus are at lower risk now of dying compared to those who have the flu. Well, that's according to new analysis by the Financial Times of the UK's coronavirus official figures. But we asked, do these findings apply to South Africans? Well, Dr. Norbert Ndjeka is the director of drug-resistant tuberculosis at the Health Department, and he joins us now live via Zoom. Doctor, that's fascinating. Can you unpack the reason for that possibility that flu could be deadlier now than COVID? Uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for inviting me and uh, I greet the, the viewers uh, across the world. Yeah, the, the possibility of, of having um, uh, the COVID kill less than uh, flu vaccine or, or flu, uh, common flu, is, is there because um, people have been getting sick and then they've been vaccinated. So in a nation like uh, United Kingdom, where a lot of people have been vaccinated uh, and a lot of people have been infected, they developed immunity in the process. So it, it explains why that, that is a possibility. Yes. So would this apply to South Africans considering we haven't had such a high take up of the vaccine? It, this doesn't apply uh, to South Africa. We know that uh, Approximately 10 to 11,000 people die from flu every year in South Africa. Uh, but we also know that uh, close to 99,000 people have died uh, since 2020 from COVID. Now, when you compare, you can see that is big. And, and because we've not really vaccinated as many people as UK, we, we cannot uh, assume, we cannot even think that that is uh, possible in, in our setting. Uh, but uh, time will tell. If we continue to, to get people vaccinated, maybe we can reach the same uh, scenario as, as the UK. It's possible. I mean, a lot more people, doctor, are getting flu, and it seems to be carrying on for a good three or four weeks even, uh, uh, people that I know. Uh, and they weren't complaining about this last year or the year before. Can we try and understand why that's happening now? Is it because we're becoming less meticulous about hygiene and mask wearing? I think last two years, there've been uh, uh, lockdowns, people were not moving like before. And, and also to some extent wearing masks uh, has got to protect uh, people in a way. So now that uh, economy is open and, and everything is, almost back to normal. It, it explains why people could get uh, more flu now, but, but we need to also prevent. People should get flu vaccines. Uh, it, it has been an old recommendation and is still uh, relevant even now. Is the flu vaccine a live vaccine, i.e. is there the actual virus I'm just explaining this for people who possibly don't know what a live vaccine is. Is there possibly the, is there the virus in the actual vaccine? No, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, uh, we, we need to check. But what, what I know is that uh, uh, your, your flu vaccine is, is different from the COVID, but, but it's still uh, relevant. Uh, we, we need to, I need to check. I'm not sure if it's a live vaccine or not. Doctor, just while I've got you on, and I know that you're an expert in drug-resistant tuberculosis, uh, how, has yes. to, how have patients with TB and drug-resistant TB been coping through COVID in the past two years? And where are they at now, considering there's always been quite a lot of drug hesitancy anyway with these patients because the medication makes them feel not very well and sometimes, uh, you know, unpleasant? Yeah, what we noted is that uh, during the first wave, uh, the number of tests, TB testing really dropped drastically, uh, and also number of people uh, put on TB treatment. Uh, but moving forward um, with the next, uh, with the second, the third, and the fourth wave, uh, the impact has not been as bad as, as the first wave because the Department of Health put a plan to, to continue routine services uh, and this applied to TB, HIV, 
immunization, uh, maternal services. And, and we see that this plan is, is working because the, the, the numbers are going back, although we're not yet back to where we were uh, prior to COVID. Quick last question, Doctor. What is the difference, or what is going to become the difference between COVID and the flu? Yeah, I think when we, we get more people vaccinated uh, and we reach proportions like UK or other nations that have vaccinated massive proportions of their populations, um, I think it's going to be more or less the same. And, and, and people need to really uh, take this very serious. It looks like we live with uh, COVID for, for a while. Uh, and we, we, it is going to become more or less like flu, and, and we will have to be vaccinating people uh, regularly, maybe every year. Uh, and this will have to focus on the high-risk group, your, your elderly, your very young, and people with, uh, uh, you know, comorbidity. The, those people should need to consider uh, these vaccines uh, moving forward. All right, thank you so much for your time. That was Dr. Norbert Ndijeka, Director of Drug-Resistant Tuberculosis at the Health Department. Thank you so much, sir, for your time.